I am super excited that Doris and Nancy, okay, are here to, 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 to teach us what they have developed. Uh, Doris and Nancy are lactation consultants. They are the queens of lactation at um, St. Vincent Hospital in, in Portland. And St. Vincent Hospital is a place that I like to call the factory. It is the busiest birth center on the entire west coast of North America. They have more babies born there than in any other facility on the west coast of North America. Um, consequently, the outpatient lactation clinic is kind of like um, a conveyor belt with babies on it, right? And so, Doris and Nancy took my training a few months ago and immediately ran with, with the, the material and managed to create um, a really successful protocol for weaning babies from nipple shields. And so I'm like super, super excited. Oh, well, by the way, these are two of the funniest women on the entire West Coast of North America also. So you're going to enjoy this presentation. So um, we know in our, in our hearts, um, during her month, maybe the different shows are part of the breastfeeding world. And we're here to help make that transition so that every month we feel confident with her breastfeeding. And, uh, you know, we're excited. It's, uh, we're, we're sort of... We're sort of a dynamic duo. Um, we are <laughs> a little bit driven. Each of us will have our bio here in a second, but we are um, only um, only experienced in a maternal child. So if you have a heart attack, don't ask us to help you because we don't do adults. Um, we only do babies. So we're going to talk about <clears throat> the techniques of um, coming out of the nipple shield. Tell me to push the button. So here's Nancy. Okay, so um, Doris's teenage son, who helped us with our technical part of the program, told us at the last minute that we need to have a photo so it made it more personal. So at the last minute, I am going through my photos and, you know, I just grabbed it. Of course, I want to grab the one more. I think I look halfway reasonable. But <laughs> these are my two kids. My daughter is 26, my son is almost 23. Um, I've been widowed for 10 years. I lost my husband 10 years ago to colon cancer. So my kids and I are a really tight unit. Um, breastfed both of them, um, have no idea how it was successful. Um, <laughs> you know, Lexi was, um, I labored with her for 17 hours before they discovered she was breech. Frank Breach, that was back in the day where they never did ultrasounds, and it was up at a big hospital in Seattle, and so they discovered she was breech, okay, so, you they know. They were filming her own cheeks. They were filming her own cheeks, and so, okay, so, you know, they, you know, they, they pulled her out, my nipples were cracked and bleeding, that was in the day where they had you toughen up your nipples first, and then use tea bags, and we all told each other it was supposed to hurt. Um, and Zach, I tried to have him be back in the same hospital, I labored for 24 hours, pushed for four, had hemorrhoids like grapes, um, had everybody and their mother felt like climbing up to try and pull him out and had a C-section anyway. He was obviously traumatized, took, him, took him forever and ever to latch, but then it took me forever and ever to wean the two of them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, that is me. Okay, I have a few more in my in my blog. So <clears throat> I have four children, and each one of them, I hope they don't you know talk about when I die. Uh, but my oldest son, the last Nicola, is 26, also a teacher, high school teacher, God love her, high school English teacher at that. <clears throat> Second in is my daughter Michaela, she's 23. God willing, she'll graduate from Evergreen State next year. <laughs> <laughs> More on the five-year plan. Um, my son Stefan, he is the Lone Ranger, God love him, all the sisters. And then my youngest, Natalia, um, is going to college actually tomorrow, so that's why I'm able to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and then my really wonderful husband up in the far right, who can latch a baby because he has listened to me in my private practice, <laughs> walk him on through it on the phone. And all the time, I'm going to set up a phone. Okay, yeah. so. Um, they've always been behind me um, 
and they're used to me with the Bluetooth on, or mom, when are you coming home from the office? So, um, each one of my kids, again, if they're going to compare, in 1986, breastfeeding for six months was sort of the gold standard, you guys think that on the back. My 89 model, Michaela, um, I breastfed for a year. Uh, my 1991 model, Stefan, um, 18 months. And then Natalia, who I call my Chihuahua, and she was the lousy latcher out of all of them. We had to say our goodbyes at 26 months. So, <clears throat> needless to say, my resume is long. <laughs> okay, Nancy, your turn. Okay, so we both have vast years of experience um, in the nursing field. We're both registered nurses. Um, I uh, graduated a bazillion years ago. <laughs> actually 38 years ago, um, from a college on the East Coast and did most of my um, experience was in pediatrics. I did general peds, peds ICU, NICU, pediatric home care. And when I came to St. Vincent's, I was actually hired by Doris um, because of my strong pediatric background um, is what got me into the, in, into the follow up clinic. Um, Doris and I both worked in NICU. Um, so one of my specialties in clinic is, is all the NICU graduates. We have a NICU graduate program. We have a 75 bed NICU, so we get a lot of babies coming through. Um, and we have a program where we get them ready to take over exclusive breastfeeding. Um, and we're having, you know, a wonderful um, success rate with that because we're open seven days a week and we're able to give them close follow-up until they're able to fly solo. And our motto is, if they call, they're seen. Because by the time they call, they're already panicked. And so we really don't turn anyone away. Anyone in the city um, has, has commercial insurance. Um, so in, in our language, that's a non-Kaiser. A little bit Kaiser kind of come as well. They just pay out of pocket. But we never turn anyone away. Um, and when the dad calls, you know it's really important. Um, if the dad's calling for a location appointment, things are going south. Um, so we see all moms and babies um, 48 to 72 hours after discharge is a continuum of care. Our OBs and pediatricians expect our babies to come through clinic. We're all um, mother baby nurses, all lactation um, certified. We have advanced practice nurses every day. We either have a nurse midwife or a, um, uh, a nurse practitioner with us every day, which allows us the opportunity to to build to build for our services. So our appointments are 45 minutes, and the first appointment is part of the maternity program. So in that appointment, we have to make sure that mom's healing okay. So we go over, you know, how you doing? Are you taking your meds? You know, what meds you're supposed to take? Are you taking them correctly? How's your blood pressure? If she's had a C-section, we check her incision. Does it look okay? Um, if, you know, we'll check we'll check her mom's bottom if if, if she's having issues there. Um, make sure the baby's okay. You know, she check their vitals, do their weights. Make sure they're not not jaundiced to the point where we feel we need to do something about it. And then we always we always are latching the baby too. So we typically have the baby you know on the breast while we're, you know, taking care of everything else. So as nurses, we're really good at, at multitasking all the things that need to be done in that initial appointment. So our takeaway from being um, outpatient, um, we learned a lot. If you've, if you've worked, um, and I've worked both inpatient and outpatient lactation, the, I think the message that I have to remind myself on a daily basis, because, you know, I could certainly do some eye rolling about what has happened prior to um, this family standing in my care, but you know, all of us in this room are providers for women and children, and I think we all have to remember that the steps taken prior to this family coming to our care were typically initiated with the best of intentions, and we really, I mean, we, you know, we're in the follow-up clinic, so a lot of times, even Monday morning quarterback would think, why didn't, why didn't they do it? Why did they do it? But if you work on the other side, you can make you understand that not all these families are in a phase of learning and listening when that particular person laid their hands on them. And I, I have to work on this every day. 
and not criticize, but maybe take that opportunity to educate. And I think that's one of the benefits we have in our program is that we're, we're really trying to walk in everybody's moccasins. So unfortunately, you know, if, if you have somebody who's has a nipple shield, I, I would love to know, did that nurse sweat? Did, you know, did, did the mom start bawling? Did they start bawling? <coughs> and, and the nurse is like, you know what, if I'm going to say breastfeeding, I may have to bring in this, this little tool. Yes. Does everybody here know what a nipple shield is? Is there anyone who does not know? Good. Awesome. Well, what a group. Awesome. So, go ahead. Sorry. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that's that, fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I wanted to, you know, I, want, I have to distinguish <coughs> myself every day. You know, I can't believe someone before me. I have to think they did the best they could. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I always try to think of where where was that person, where was that person giving the care, and where was the family that's receiving the care? Not everybody, not every baby's ready to breastfeed, as you know, many of the videos we've all seen and, and, and had the good fortune to watch. You know, it's not always as magical as we come, which is why we have nine thousand appointments a year. There is not a dull day in the clinic. There's a breast or a baby that needs to come in. Um, no. 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 <laughs> okay, so I think I said earlier, um, we have a unique situation, and I think one of the reasons why we are the biggest clinic and we've been around for so long is that somebody up in the, in the big tower um, figured out how to actually um, get reimbursement for this because we all know without reimbursement then you know you don't have services and so so that was um, done by you know the MBAs and the you know pencil pushers and everything and how how to get us reimbursed and and actually it's reimbursed just like any other office visit which is very cool. so so our moms can come as often as they need to until they're confidently up and running. So some of our moms only need one appointment, and then they call us if they're going back to work and having issues. And some of our moms, we, we call them our frequent flyers, um, come a lot. And I think if we didn't have the capability to see families as frequently as we do, we probably wouldn't have the successes with breastfeeding or weaning from the shield. It's, it's having that constant contact, um, establishing a relationship, um, Encouraging the mother that she's progressing. If you're home alone with an infant, you know they can they can they can drive your IQ down really quick when you start thinking, I'm never going to get out of this hole. I can't get out on my own. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have we. Have, I I sat at the big long table a decision whether this clinic would open or not, and I will never forget our administrator saying they're already coming. Just build the clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we, again, we, you know, we've been known as Lactasia here in Oregon. <laughs> you know, we're really lucky, <laughs> and they don't have to have given birth in no, 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 no. anybody. No, we have moms from all over, especially on the weekends. We right. call them our damsels in distress. We usually get a lot of weeping moms that call. They, they, they can't even speak, and we pretty much say, you know, don't panic, get dressed. Um, we will work you in. Okay, but we are at the big house, <coughs> and we have a wide variety of patients. So we have folks who've never had a, a provider touch them when they come in through the ER, ED, the emergency department. They've never had prenatal care. They maybe didn't have insurance or didn't have access. So we have folks who um, have very little, and we have folks who have a lot. We have folks who you know, can blink and conceive, and we have folks who have to go through the chemistry lab to have it. Well, we have everybody. We have amazing women on our antepartum unit who are, they're, they're like the, the egg with a little crack in it. You just can't move them. You want to keep them stable. They are fragile. They have their medical conditions from, you know, from, from heart conditions, kidney conditions. I mean, autoimmune. You know, we've got the whole gamut which gives us a lot of experience. But a lot of these moms are going to have babies that did not get the memo on how to breastfeed. They are delivered early 
or they're delivered in a setting that's a little bit um, unstable, and so we have to provide that stability. But this, this is our audience every day. We are in a hospital setting, yeah, you know, but we don't have a lot of nurse ratchets, but you know, let's face it, there are nurses who could get a rip about breastfeeding, and there are nurses that will break their back over breastfeeding. You know, there are CPAs who don't care if your taxes are done well either. So, you know, I mean, let's face it, there's, 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 there's a lot of good, and then the folks who um, really seem to stand out more get more attention are the ones who don't do their job as well as we would hope. But we are in a, in a medical setting that has policies and procedures, and our babies have to demonstrate the ability to feed themselves <coughs> prior to leaving the hospital, or they're not going home. And then we have mother-infant separation. So let's all choose which one we want. I'd rather see the baby go perhaps with a substitute feeding plan than to have the baby in pediatrics and the mom at home weeping and feeling unsuccessful. We have an incredible weight loss. Um, and Nancy and I, and Gina's over here in our, in our audience too. She's one of our nurses in the hospital, um, as well as a lactation consultant, both in the hospital and in the clinic. And we are actually rolling out a, um, uh, we, are, we are revisiting a research about infant weight loss and, and the unnecessary supplementation that is implemented and uh, related to what is perceived to be a huge weight loss. And in, in, in reality, these babies are perfectly healthy. They're just overhydrated by moms who have highly medicalized births. So stay tuned, Nancy and I. To like each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. um, and we have a population that wants, they want the PowerPoint presentation on, on Latch. So we have a lot of moms, and I'm not, I shouldn't generalize, but we do have a lot of moms who spend more time stroking their iPhone than they do their baby. And they know how to download, <laughs> they know, <laughs> iBaby, <laughs> but they don't know how to, I mean, seriously, they don't know how to hold it. They're like, whoa, you know what I just said. And so when the baby's bobbing and around, they interpret that their baby doesn't have it together, or they don't have it together. Nancy and I talk about this all the time. Babysitting is a thing of the past. Young women, they don't babysit anymore. Who, who's babysitting? Grandma? I mean, somebody else is babysitting. So we have women who have never laid hands on an infant and having an infant. And that, that's scary for them. So that's many times where our nipple shields come into play. The mom's perception of success or failure is wavering there. Um, the baby's uh, demands are increasing, and by golly, we have to send them home because really and truly, they're not, they're not ill. They're just having a feeding difficulty. We have a lot of delayed um, lactogenesis too. Everybody knows that's when the milk comes in, <clears throat> and again, we have a lot of women who will have um, their own baggage coming into childbirth, and sometimes that holds up the milk bus. And then nipples, holy mackerel, there are so many labels for nipples. Um, there's one for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> it'd be nice if everybody showed up on the scene really perky. Okay, <laughs> really perky. But if you're um, of North American descent, <coughs> I'll raise my hand, um, chances are you're not perky. You are smooth. I don't like the word flat, because flat is like the wall. But certainly the contour of the breast is different if it's your first child and you are um, fair, like me. So nipples get put into categories before women even have their babies. So they'll walk in and say, well, I do have flat nipples. And so they were already sort of like, oh gosh, and damaged goods. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to do this as well as I think I could. But, so if we could get off the nipple labeling, that might be helpful. Um, certainly the damage. And then, um, you know, women who have some anatomical um, deviations with like inverted nipples. Um, we, didn't put in, we didn't put it in piercing either. We have, you know, we have to be on the lookout for piercings yeah. as well. Yeah. So, Hence the need for a little bit of help on the breastfeeding home front. Uh, uh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> if 
because we know they're in our life, we have to face the demons on a regular basis. Right? Here they are. Oops. Okay. And honestly, if, you know, if a mom is coming in to us, a secondary capacity, then we want to ask them. They would not see it at all. We want to touch We have to. Um, here, we'll throw them out to the crowd. <laughs> 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 well, it's like Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> like, Show like, us your nipples. Like, we'll get rid of it. Okay, but um, I, a lot of what Nancy and I see is it's not so much the the tools. It's the it, it's the it's how it's used. Is it the right size? Um, what I tell moms all the time is, um, nipples have been around since the Egyptians, okay? If you guys are ever bored one night, just put in history of nipple shields. It is amazing, okay? Man, woman, woman has worked hard throughout civilization to make sure her baby is fed. And so nipple shields are made from stone, God heal that child, <laughs> glass, metal, clay, leather, and let's go on and on. And the, it's the materials of the, of, of the time. <clears throat> so this feeding difficulty has been going on for a while. I told Nancy this morning, I hope I don't offend anybody when I say this, but you know the wise men that came to the manger? I think one of them was a woman, and inside one of those really ornate boxes was probably a
Because, again, well, I'm not really like an advocate. You know, yeah, the device the provides a bridge then, I mean, especially yeah. if there's pain, I understand yeah. that, yeah. but in other, in other ways too, it just helps bridge yes. that. The baby was disorganized, frantic, okay. um, yeah. I mean, and again, you know, perhaps we take it too lightly, and that's probably because we um, have the good fortune to follow folks, but when you have a mom who has heard everything about how she shouldn't use it, and you're thinking, well, I can let your baby, but I'm not going home with you. I have to give you something to work on when we're away from each other. I promise you, I will guide you, I will be with you, I will you know, do it every day. But right now, we have got to put on the training wheels. We just have to. And a lot of times it's just inexperience um, and then throwing the damage. But you know, by the time they've heard everything about what they shouldn't do, you know, we got to haul them over to the church, they got to go to confession, we got to tell them they're going to be fine, we tell them that they're going to not use it forever, we won't let them down. And rarely does this mom need that nipple shield or baby for very long if you follow them. That's the problem. I think that's where the bad, the bad rap comes is women are given nipple shields and said, you know what, good luck, hope it works out for you. Um, you know, yeah, and under, underlying is there is you couldn't get it together, and so you have to have this thing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what I hear from moms. Yeah, and there so. are women in the community that are using them for way too long. I mean, there, there are, you know, we want them off the nipple shield. We don't want them to go to college with the nipple shield. But, you know, there are moms that, that, that use them longer, and the longer they use them, right, the harder it is to get them off. So, so it's intended for a short term. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Bridge. <clears throat> very, very short term. Right. If you're still 12 with your training wheel, you probably have another problem. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, right. really. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 You know, we need to dig a little deeper. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So. What's the ideal period of time that you think oh, is the time for use? It's cut. It's cut. Yeah. Okay. I can figure out how to throw it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right. Okay, position girl. Okay, so the underlying message for is that the baby's latch um, should not should not be painful for the mom. Okay, so so if you ask a mom, does it hurt? She she doesn't she has no reference. You know, she's got somebody sucking on her nipples, and so the expectation for a lot of our moms is a little bit of pain is normal. A little bit of this pinching is perfectly acceptable. And when we kind of show them what we want it to feel like, they go, really? Really? It's not supposed to hurt? And we say, no, it's, it's not supposed to hurt. So, so we do a lot of, of latching and, and, and positioning. Um, you know, we want an undamaged nipple. We want the mom and baby to be happy with the experience. We don't want the mom to be crying when the baby's on and, you know, backing up and deep breathing. Um, what we do know is that if, if a mom is latching poorly with a nipple shield, it's going to be a heck of a lot harder to get her to latch correctly without it. So, so we, we are sticklers about what do we mean by a good latch with a nipple shield. You know, the baby has to be totally on the shield. We, want to, we don't want them tromboning on and off the shield. We want to make sure that the shield is the right size. We don't want to have this mom that's got really small nipples um, with, a, with a big nipple shield and her nipple is not pulled all the way into the shield. Mm -hmm. so, so for sticklers on size, sizes extra small, small, and regular. And we end up changing sizes frequently based on mom's swelling, based on how much fluid she got. So, so we're constantly looking at the size of the nipple shield, because if it's too big, she's not going to she's not going to get as much milk, mm -hmm. or too small, she's not going to get as much either. Um, and you know, this is this is a given. The mom has to be supervised on a nipple shield. You can't give her a nipple shield and say, "Good luck, have a great time, catch you later." We we always follow them up. If it's for damage, for example, we see a mom, her nipples are cracked. We give her a nipple shield that feels good. We have her back in clinic in 48 to 72 hours. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Entire policies and protocols. Yes, we have policies and protocols. As soon as you can pass the shower test is kind of what we tell them. Oh. You can stand in front of your shower without screaming. That's probably a good time <laughs> to get them off the shield. And that's about 48 to 72 hours. And sadly, moms can buy these at Target. So. But yes, moms, no, yeah. moms, moms yeah. go out there and buy them themselves. So you the know, but knows exactly. We just yeah. want, you know, and we're happy that at least they're it's thinking of something right. to get their babies to their breasts. So you got to give them credit for putting their babies on on their breasts. We just want to help them to get off the show. So. So here's, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's sort of the framework. We we work with them on on the weaning. Um, First and, first and foremost, okay, let's make sure the child is fed. The baby should never have to struggle to eat. So if they're struggling, let's not take the, as we call it, training wheels off the bike. Um, let's, let's just have the honeymoon phase. We've also noted, and we'll continue to note in our research, that as these mom's diaries, as they unload their fluid, their breast tissue becomes more elastic and perhaps can and go with the flow, no pun intended, with the baby latching and the milk flow responding quicker. These, these women who, yeah, they come in and they, I mean, they're like, they're like a giant cushion. They are so puffy, you push on them and your fingers, you know, just stand into them. They would love to lose 10% of their body weight by the time we see them on day three. They are loaded with fluid. <clears throat> because I think we have, we have a 90, 5% epidural rate mm -hmm. in our hospital. Mm -hmm. So we've got fluids coming and going. Mm -hmm. um, so the nipples were elastic, the baby has a hope and a prayer to latch on without the benefit of the silicone. Also, if we give everybody a little time to get to know each other, you know, we call the honeymoon, is the baby has a chance to, to also improve his or her skills. You know, some kids are just kind of lacking on the startup with their feedings. They, they've been shot out of their safe place. Um, they've been handled a lot, speaking from a hospital setting. They've been, you know, looked at and hoped at and, you know, feel hoped. And they, they're not, you know, can I just go home? I wear, I wear my ruby slippers. There's no place like home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that, you know, from the time they're born, I think. They need some time to get it together. <clears throat> and then there's internal confidence. If you don't have the mom's confidence, you're dead no matter. So if she doesn't think she's successful, you can't move forward. And that's the worst, that's the worst feeling I think in our appointments is the mom who feels like a failure. And that, I think throughout your mothering career, if you've ever felt like a failure, um, you know, it's a bad day. Okay, so the best case scenario, so the so the so the moms, so the shoes. Sorry, Michelle, by the way. Um, um, okay, so so best case scenario, the mom's in clinic now. I've got a hungry baby ready to feed. The nipples are not damaged. Mom is confident. She knows how to handle her baby. She's getting the latch nice and comfortable. There's a million ways to latch a baby. None of them are wrong if it doesn't hurt. I don't care how she's latching. As long as she's telling me it's not hurting her and baby is transferring milk, you know, the biological, the cross cradle, the football, sideline, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I let mom show me what's most comfortable for her. And, you know, we, we, totally, we totally go from there. And some of our moms, as you guys know, need, need more help than other moms. Um, we try to, so we try, we, you know, we'll start with the shield for some of our moms, you know, let the baby kind of satisfy himself a little bit, take the shield off, you know, get him nice and close, and, and see what he does. So, so sometimes that works, and everyone's happy, and we don't have to do anything again. But typically, we find that the baby gets a little frantic because that nipple is not, long anymore he's used to that that big you know silicone thing and they start to freak out and if they freak out then then mom freaks out so so that's when we we do this this cranial sacral move which we call it you know we're just going to relax him a little bit because you know we're in the hospital we can't say cranial sacral because everybody goes mental so we just you know, we don't say it. we just say i'm going to show you a really great way to relax 
your baby a little bit, kind of calm him down, reorganize him so he can, you know, consider, you know, going without his training moves. You've got great nipples, you've got a great baby, you're, you're a great mom, you're a great dad, this is a great world. You know, I mean, just, because they just get so, you know, panicky. And so, okay, so the first thing I do is I say, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really, really easy to be able to do this yourself. You know, so I wash my hands again, I put on a glove. And so, I have the baby, and I say, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put my finger in the baby's mouth, and, you know, I want to put my finger in, I don't know, to about the, you know, second, second knuckle, and I'm going to just rest it gently on his tongue, because I want him to groove his tongue, kind of like a taco. I want him to do this. Because in the nipple shield, he can get really sloppy and still get milk. So I want him to get used to pulling your nipple back. So I want to, like, put my finger back, you know, as far enough. I mean, I'm not going to gag him, but I can go back there and see what he's see what he thinks. So, of course, I'm going to wait for him to invite me in. I mean, if the baby is, is not wanting me to do this, then, you know, mom calms him down, and we talk nice again, and then, you know, if he doesn't want me to start on his tongue, I get to meet a baby that didn't like pressure on their palate. They love that. So, so I'll start with this, and if he's letting me do it, you know, he do it, and he say, oh, good boy, great, great. And then I turn my finger and go up on either side of his palate, just gentle, gentle pressure, you know, kind of wait for the release. Most babies love it. Then I go on the other side. And then I go, go, um, you know, into the cheek. I say, you know, kind of like you're just giving him a, you know, make a little room, like, you, like you're going to give him a Novocaine, but like nice and gentle. Most <laughs> 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 yeah, not really. You know, because they want to know where to push. You know, just gentle, gentle pressure. You know, you're not going to like hook him like a fish, and you know, he's just easy. And most babies really like that. You know, and, and you know, when you're in there, they're kind of like, <sighs> and then you go to the other side. And then you latch them on. And many times, that's all it takes. Wow. You kind of just reorganize them. They calm down. You make sure that the chin, right, is touching the breast. So latch is very, very important to have a really good latch. And then the mom goes, and then, you know, she's, she's he's sucking away. And then suddenly it feels like, oh my god, it feels like I'm latching a snapping turtle. And so <laughs> then I have to come out and take them off. Because, you know, they, they kind of forgot their moves, right? And then I say, okay, again, you just remind him of what we're looking for. So you might have to do it a couple of times. And if, and if the baby's not ready, right, you, you know, it happens. You try without the shield and the baby's still freaking out. Then you tell the mom, okay, so this is your homework over the next couple days. You're going to romance him off the shield. There is no timeline. He's not going to go to college with it. But we're going to romance him off. When everybody's calm and in a good mood, we're going to do it. And, you know, and, and you can do this move, and Daddy can do the move. But, but you know, it really, it really helps reorganize him. And then they, they do it. And we've been doing it now. We took your class last in October. We were really excited. We started doing it. I don't know. Six months, and it's really, it's really, really helpful. And the best part is the mom. Yeah. You know, it's the light bulb goes on. Yeah. And, and, and again, so many of these moms are in science camp with their spreadsheets and their applications and their oh, yeah. everything. And then, and then when you give them something that's almost out of the cave, you know, you're like, okay, this is like really yeah. easy. Because <laughs> they're waiting for the big fireworks thing, you're like, no. And you have fireworks. a lot of conversations. Should I cut my nails? Are my nails too long? Should I have no knowledge? Is this okay? Should I wear a glove? You're wearing a glove. You know, like, wash my hands before, should I wash my hands after? You know, be reasonable. I have to wear a glove because this is not my thing. But you do not have to wear a glove because this is. Your baby. Now, if you're doing it to your girlfriend's baby, I'd probably wear a glove, but this is your baby. So, we have a lot of conversations about nails and, you know, pressure. pressure. Yeah. You know, I said, when you're gagging him, you know, he, he probably isn't too happy with it. So, you know, <laughs> you know don't go down to his tonsils. Just like get a light pressure, you know. But 
have been for these kinds of babies. No. So it's yes. a lot of times it's just the no. Kids and not the babies. No, these babies, yeah. these women, women, unfortunately, a lot of Intel execs, bless their souls, they got chemistry sets for Christmas when I got Betsy Wetsy. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know how to homemade. We spend so much time talking about diapers. Is the diaper too tight? Is, it, is the umbilical cord this, you know? It's amazing how much confidence these, these women do not have. So even putting their finger in their baby's mouth, Take a while to convince him. Do you ever do you ever put your finger in the mother's mouth to show her where to go or how to? I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. Because that would probably be a whole other twenty minutes. That curious, <laughs> yeah. 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 Because you know, my you know, we have forty-five minute appointments, and you know, I got my pager pretty free. I got you know, babies, you know, in the waiting room. Yeah. 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 So we just say um, oral exercise techniques demonstrated. Sweet. Yeah. How benign yeah. is that? Yeah. 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 For a couple of Catholic girls? Yeah. Yeah. Can I explain to the parents of this baby that they're asking, how do I know when it, it's released? Like, say they're doing math or technique. What kind of language do you Well, use? I kind of say, see how the baby's relaxing and see yeah. how. You know, he's taking a big sigh and see how he's looking at you so lovingly yeah. and see how his hands look yeah. so but he's loving this. And if he's not, I mean if he's freaking out, then we right. all know we you know, we, we, we don't go in. Um but most of the time now this mom has had this baby for a few days and is is beginning yeah. or weeks and is beginning to be less freaked out about their baby and so they will, you know. The and then I think to, to answer your question, a lot of again, what we have, we, we have to lay the groundwork of confidence first. Yeah. So we can have all we can have all the jabber we want and all the hands, and, but if they don't really trust where you're taking them, they're not going there. So it's building that rapport, mm -hmm. and then they're open arms. I mean, everybody in this room who's presented, they know that, right? Yeah. They, they think you're walking on water, and you're thinking. And we, try, and we try to back away. You know, we try not to be the ones doing it because, you know, we're not going with the babies. And so we try to let chart and say, oh my God, that's great. You're, you're yeah. doing amazing. I'm going to yeah. give you a job. You're going to see my next patient. You're like amazing. You're <laughs> yeah. doing this your whole life. Look at you. Look at your baby. <laughs> and then, you know, we have to do pre and post feeding weights. We have to document a feed. These kids have to do something in clinic. And even the ones, you know, that are doing okay, but they didn't transfer a whole lot of milk, we won't say to the mom, your baby transferred 15 mLs. We just say, oh, your kid did great. He's doing great. He looks great. And even the ones that didn't transfer a lot, we say, you know what? He's doing wonderful. Just wonderful. He's not transferring anything, but he's doing wonderful. <laughs> you have another appointment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so but I think to answer your question, and I don't know that we gave you a really solid answer there, I think the best thing a mom can hear is, you know your baby. Mm -hmm. You know your baby. Close your eyes. Okay, you can't see anything because all of us are way too visual. We're like trying to figure it out with our eyes. And you know what? If you're blind, you're going to another sense. Close your eyes. What is your baby telling you? Oh, he's relaxing. Bingo. Because we have, again, a very high population of, you know, I mean, they're not the dialogue. They are the Wi-Fi moms. Okay, if, if you've got a mom who's easy telling, you know, you can take her somewhere. But the Wi-Fi moms, you know, you have to shut them down. You have to say, power down, close your eyes, feel your baby. Yeah. If you're on an island with this kid, you're gonna figure it out. And they, but they want us to, you know, many. And, and we're sort of generalizing. It's like, you know, we're like, well, they work with the. But that's the well, ones that we, we see. Those are the ones that are probably <clears throat> the ones you have to work the hardest. But I do think it's the instilling the confidence first. If you don't have credible, you're going in there. Yeah. This is so elegant. It's <laughs> groove the groove the tongue. 
spread maxilla. Yeah. Distract yeah. psychomas. Yeah. Band. Yeah. Like the answer I said, first it's knock, 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 can I come in? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. If I can't come in, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. So, like, yeah. <laughs> but just getting your finger in the baby's mouth, if you can go there, then it's can I stay in here? Oh, no. You can't stay in here. Sorry. You can come in, but you need to go out there. So, if I can stay in here, then can I sort of help you loosen up? And then if you get to progress to each step, that's where we get the success of the progress. If these kids are shutting you down early, you're going to go, oh, not this appointment, we have homework. And then we know the babies, because we've been, we have been referring to cranial sacral therapists and, um, and uh, pediatric chiropractors for years. We, great, great, great results. And so if we see a baby that definitely needs more work than what we're doing, even though we took Carol's <laughs> class, we don't do cranial sacral therapy. I, I mean, we, we, we know yeah, the rules, but, yeah. but, you know, practice makes perfect in that department. <coughs> we, we can do some things with confidence, but, but we will say, you know what, why don't you see Teresa? You love her, she's great, you know, your baby really could benefit. And, you yeah. know, if we've got a mom who's going to buy into that, then... Yeah. Right. If we have a mom that's not going to buy into it, then well, I think you know the analogy because you know Nancy and I are just having way too much fun. Um, who do you want to do the surgery? The nurses' aid or the surgeon? So if I just got my <laughs> nurses' aid certificate. I'm not going into that surgical suite. So if I got a kid I can't really figure out, don't prolong, don't prolong the, the process. Get them out of your and into somebody else yeah. because ultimately breastfeeding is at risk. Right, and like, if we can't get them off the people shield with these easy techniques, then there's usually some other area that they could benefit from with body work that, that we believe um, absolutely no doubt about it. And right. so we, we get them right in if we have a buy-in. But we have a lot of people in our, in our um, clientele that don't buy in. So then, yeah. are you collecting some statistics? Not yet, but we probably should. Yeah. We probably should. <laughs> yeah. Alex, did you do have a question? Because like you scared me a little bit. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like ignoring you. Um, okay. So, so what I what I'm wondering is this is a simple technique for a baby who just has a little bit of trigeminal facial mm -hmm. malfunction, okay? Mm -hmm. So an oral motor issue, basically. Right. I'm, these are the babies who don't really need nipple shields. Right. I'm wondering um, if you were to do this maneuver before initiating yes. a nipple yeah. shield, yeah, if you wouldn't then have to get one out. Okay, so that's, right. that, you know what, that's yeah. a really good point and that's oh. what we do a lot. So I get a lot of babies that are on a nipple shield because I'm post. I like the the end of the of the line. So then I get them off. But if I got a baby that's just latching crazy um, and I can't get comfort, I I have done it first before I get a nipple shield because I don't want to have to get a nipple shield if I don't need it because then I have to romance them off. And so so I will. And you're absolutely right. right. I have been able to like relax. And maybe I'll, you know, let them unpack a little bit, you know, do that, you know, movement and all that kind of stuff, and let everyone calm down and, and do that. And yes, it has been successful if I get them before a nipple shield. I think the hard part is, is um, that, again, the nipple shield introduction is typically in a, in a setting, in, you know, in a clinical setting, in a hospital setting, um, and where, where I would love to go and, and educate um, all of the hands that are helping these moms and babies, I'm hesitant because, you know what, an ounce, an ounce of information, people go hot wild and then they start messing around with stuff. So it's like, you know, we're going to see these folks before the nipple. So that's where a lactation consultant who has some additional skills, you know, the driven duo here. We, we could probably go in and see that mom at bedside and forego the nipple shield. But, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare take that on right now with the general population of the hospital staff because, you know, people with an ounce of knowledge are dangerous sometimes. And I, I can just see it now, you know, people <coughs> doing moves and, and they don't really, 
they don't have the foundation behind it. So if we can get our lactation staff educated and skilled, you know, really define their skill set, I think that would be our first approach. Mm -hmm. But to go to the greater, you know, the greater population, I, I think again, that's where we would probably get shut at done we've been introducing it because we well, what we are doing in the hospital, hospital, which is exciting, you know, you know, skin to skin sounds like really normal, right? But in, in our population, it's a big deal because moms really like their babies burrito wrapped and have everyone, you know, come and see the baby and hold the baby. So, so we are trying very, very hard. In fact, Gina is one of our um, inpatient nurses to really, really do a lot of skin to skin documented. What does that mean? You know, try to minimize the visitors so the babies can wake up from all their, you know, things that we have done and just kind of latch, you know, gently and maybe we won't need as many mental shields, but we got to unwrap them and wake them up and, you know, come on, you know, get them home. So, yeah. so we're hoping that we can, you know, have less nipple shields than, than we have. I think if we have the good fortune of one completing our research that this child is not feeding poorly relative to weight loss, yeah. because that's the hoopla, you know, like, oh my god, they're at 9.2% and going down. So there's a lot of panic about what if. Um, if, we could, if we could just relax and then follow up. I, my, you know, my, my own little personal um, thought is, because I know, my 86 and 89 models, they were, we were in the hospital three and two days respectively. My 91 and 93 model kids, I, I'm, I'm thrilled I only have 24 hours a day. Get out before we make you sick. These yeah. people are generally healthy once they have the baby, right all their drama trauma. <coughs> um, they need to do their part and have the baby and go home and then have continued support. Because I think what is implementing so much intervention is all of these um, invalid concerns. The kid pooped and peed, and so 9.2%, um, that's a good thing. <laughs> they pooped. Uh, you know, and then the bilirubin, you know, it's time for the bilirubin concern to go to the next, you know, wave. I mean, I'm, not, I'm only in my 32nd year of nursing, and that pendulum swing to so worry about it, we don't worry about it. I'm waiting to not worry about it. Um, you know, if it, these, you know, these families are under the, you know, they're under the pressure, we're under the pressure, the baby's under the pressure, and sometimes we just have to say, you know, we're going to glue the shit together until we get you out of here, and then you're going to have problems. You no, know, another thing I forgot, um, along with the move, is tummy time. I forgot oh, to yeah. say tummy time. Yeah. And so, so, so we're doing the oral moves, and then we're, we're really telling parents, but now that Michelle, I'm going to like actually show parents, because I was just telling parents, you know, like put them on right away, but now I'm going to show them how to do it, because I think it makes a lot of difference in, in the neck strength and the oral strength, tell them to get and their tongue drops, and, to, and, and they kind of unpack and relax and move around a little bit. I think that helps with, with a more comfortable latch also. So in that oral is also tummy time, tummy time, tummy time. Tummy time. Because that's, yeah. yeah. So, we're put, so we're making a better push for that too. But we're going to show them. We're going to show them yeah. Yeah, how do you do tummy time. Because I didn't know either. I just said, I don't put them on their tummy. So. <laughs> but we did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 But now I'm going to like, I'm going to romance them. Just yes. like, yeah. yeah. How successful has this been? In, in working with a baby who's got a sensory sucking problem, these worst kinds, you know, that we're, that we're seeing, you know, a lot more of, have you had success in, in working with that baby that you, you know, know needs more cranial work? Has this maneuver helped getting them off a the shield? Because in my experience, those are the babies most likely to get addicted. Um, and they're, they're like the bane of my existence. It's like, oh my God, you've arrived with the nipple shield, now how the fuck am I going to get you off? <laughs> I, and so what's helping, yes, and, and we see a ton of those too. We, have, we see lots and lots of babies coming back, you know, because yeah. we follow them the whole time they're breastfeeding. So we have three month old, four month old, you know, mom's got a milk supply issue, the baby won't get off the shield. Um, I'm hoping 
that, you know, showing the moms these moves early um, can be helpful. And there are some babies that, you know, just, I can't get off the show. There, there are. But, but I, I would say that when we identify that they're sort of out of our, you know, little tiny speck of experience with our little moves that are our secret, that's when we refer them. It's like, okay, you need to go up the food chain. Oh, yeah. You need to go see um, Prentice April, PT, OT, somebody else, and then come back and we'll restart because this yeah. is out of my scope. And I, I, I could make it, but that isn't going to help you. So, yeah. Yeah. Have you had success then yeah. in having them go for cranial work, mm -hmm. get them to the place where now we've only got a normal motor problem instead mm -hmm. of a yes. sensory issue, yeah. and then been able to do this maneuver and get them off. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hands oh, down. Yeah. Hands down. And it's knowing your limits. It's yeah. knowing that you've got to get oh, them yeah. in the next step. Say, please go and see these, you know, and, and our parents that have buy-in, without a doubt, we've had a couple of babies that that made remarkable progress yeah. with pediatric chiropractor and um, so you know, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and again okay. I think um, the talk, you know, when you know if you have someone who's uh, not sure and you give them the five grams of pressure, you know, you're like, okay seriously, your child have more than five grams of pressure getting here, so this is gonna be a cake block. Um, the treatment that the baby's going to get. And when you show them, like Carol said, when you give them that little test, they're like, really? And we're sort of kind of skeptical, like, really? That's going to do something? They go, amazing. It's amazing. And we're so, lucky here in Oregon that, that we even have this. And, and we feel fortunate as lactation nurses that, you know, have worked only in a medical environment um, that we know about. I mean, that, that we're able to recognize it. I mean, we can take a look at, I mean, I can take one look at a baby and go, oh boy, you know, you, yeah. you really need some work. Um, I mean, we all believe that everyone could benefit from work, but you know the ones that no matter what I do, I can't get this kid to, to latch comfortably. Um, I know that that baby, needs, that baby needs work. And we're lucky because we have great practitioners in our area.